exactly the same size, so they all sit on top of each other very easy to assemble. Uh, many kids, that's the little driver, takes the um, 10 million ups or thereabouts and ups it to about 30. Did you, did you build that jet? Yeah. Thanks, Jack. the um, VK5 power module, which is the pre-driver. Uh, next to that is a little concoction by VK3 BFT Peter, which is um, a bias controller. It senses the voltage on the um, transmit lead, and when the lead fires, it turns the bias on and off. Because unfortunately, this module here um, it's biased for long and it runs very hot so I decided to turn it on and off so if you're not in transmit mode um, it'll sit there and reasonably cool but when it's in transmit mode it's very very hot uh, that's the main PA which is kind of what we call it the Polish module but it, it's got a um, BLF6 G system now which is, uh, what is it, 45 dB, 32 watts, so, um, and quite efficient, runs nice and cool, very nice little module. And you'll notice also, uh, there's the um, current sensing module, which runs a little later, which uh, monitors the current flowing through into the uh, power module. And also, a um, stereo compressor, I found that the, the microphone and the streamer, uh, the microphone from the camera and the streamer, two different volumes all over the place, over driven or under driven. So, uh, Ultronics, 50 bucks, works perfectly. And uh, even, uh, even Ross said that um, the audio was, was excellent, so can't complain. And uh, there's the, the cooling. I've got um, four fans underneath it, each of the heat sinks. Uh, that's the PA. So do I, I originally started with two 50 mils per cent, it wasn't quite enough. So I, I, I put a slightly larger one on, so I it managed to keep it cool. But definitely required because uh, digital. You're running some bias, but that's on all the time, so you need as much cooling as possible. Um, DC step up to power converter. The, um, well, the PA, big PA, it's a 1200 megs run off 24 volts, so uh, $49 on eBay. And um, Ralph and I did a test. So, uh, yes, I, I will um, when Ralph's doing this. I'll hand him out. Um, I ran it down one night to 7.8 volts before it got down. So, um, maybe it was a hundred And it, it, uh, 
200 volts, so let's say 8 volts, then 24 volts out, then um, no variation, lovely number of volts, and they're quite efficient too. I've run um, my, my one, I've run mine at um, about 9.5 amps, and very little heat, and no, the virtually no voltage drop, so lovely number of volts. Uh, there's the capabilities at uh, 12, actually 1256 as well. And uh, 1276. Whoops. Um, uh, the control uh, method is uh, front panel menu. Um, oh, I'll just. I'll wait for some running repairs. This is going live, by the way. There you go, excellent. What mistake? There was no mistake, it's perfect. Um, I'll, go back to the, I'll go back to the start just quickly. Um, now look, you've got um, that, that button is menu. Right, that's the scroll through the menus, and this one is the most important. That bottom middle button, that's the transmit button. That's, that's the best one. So which one? No, no, no. That's always on. It's always on. Oh, okay, the switch on the left hand side, sorry, is, is basically um, we're using a, up there is a stereo. VU meter driver, um, just a, a little uh, bit of freeway, and that switches from left and right channel. Uh, it was just quite simple to use it up in the channel. So you can switch between left and right channel. Um, I think that's just about it. Um, where are we? Oh, uh, uh, yes. Um, I've uh, output up to about 30 watts in 12 steps. Um, composite video, live stereo audio, 17.8 volts, nominal. Um, it is two seating mains capable, but I haven't sourced the power supplies as yet. Um, it's difficult to find one that sits in this place and gives the power consumption. Um, we are level for you, Mina, and it's fully adjustable now with the uh, compressor. And the compressor is 2.1 compression. Oh, that's about it. There we go. Alright, I'll take the microphone now. Can I just pitch you to where I've got right there here? Mixing console here. So I'll take the laptop. Yep, there you go. Two minutes away. You have a good keyboard where you waste the time when you find it. I'm there. So, so as you know, everyone, I have a lot of work on me. Is that true? I'm not for you. Okay, that's it. Let me just check the menu and make it tiny here if I'm ready. And uh, we don't need any compression with my voice, that's for sure. So, I just wanted to talk for a few moments. This is only a very short talk tonight. Um, I like that really fantastic presentation that you did to see a couple of weeks ago. Wow, wow, what a presentation that was. Um, so, uh, yeah, just take my mind from the mind. Oh, here we are. Well, here I'm actually here, yeah, working the camera at the back of the room here. Um, just wanted to talk a little bit about the on-screen display. Now, someone once said to me, um, digital ATV is going to be the end of American television because you just buy the boards. There's nothing to build and construct. And I think that what you've seen already convinces you there is still quite a bit of work that you have to do in constructing a, a transmit like this. These are not off-the-shelf products, but we wanted something really quite customised. We wanted a way of um, understanding exactly what's going on in the transmitter at any one time. I have a little bit of a reputation because I've been through uh, three cars transmitting to power, uh, power amplifiers and uh, it's cost me a lot of money. So we wanted a way of being able to monitor what's going on the, 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 uh, inside the device and what's next to the start of this point in time if you'd be kind enough. So like all good projects, uh, at the centre of everything is the uh, the microchip and micro the AZF 2420, a little bit overpowered for those of you who didn't know a uh, microchip, a little bit overpowered, but I had a lot of them left over from a previous project, so it was worthwhile. Uh, into that, we're feeding a number of different um, items 
sorts of information. Firstly, uh, we are tracking the voltage to the PA, so we're looking at the 24 volt rail. Uh, we are tracking the current consumed by the PA. That's a little five watt resistor there. To the S5, and the S4, five watt resistors in parallel, quite well known, giving us rate of O5 iron as a total resistance. We look at the current drawn from a very small voltage. That feeds into uh, an RNA 271, which is a high side current monitor. That is uh, a fixed going device that provides a variable DC voltage into the ATP converter of the pink micro at the center of the interface. We also measure the power, uh, the power output, the RF power output of the transmitter by using a little uh, barrier diode, a shocky barrier in the output, just as a little prior sensor, and uh, we're able to get an indication of what power the transmitter is putting out. Uh, up here we have two little temperature probes. They, there's a, let me get this right, DS18. B20 for S20, can't remember. But the digital, three chip digital, three wire, if you will. Actually, they're not that one wire, if you want to get really technical, but they've got three pins, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, very accurate digital uh, thermometers, uh, 0.5 degree accuracy, and they just like put a serial data stream. How simple is that? So those also feed into the, the chip here. One of them is on the PA, the other one's on the driver, so we can keep an eye on what's happening. All of this is driven by the user interface over here, two simple push button displays, which are right there. You <laughs> can't see them because they're black. But uh, trust me, they are on the front panel. One is the on screen display, the other is DTMF. We'll show you that in just a few moments. The other thing the device does is well, we need some way of seeing what's going on. And that comes out over here through this little breakout board. It's a MAC 7456. Um, a great little product, it's on screen display chip, last of a breed, it's a tremendous product, it's very difficult to solve it. Thank goodness it's quite fun bringing it out on this little breakout board with video in on one side and video out on the other. Damien, would you like to try something one around there? I feel a little bit bad on this little laser pointer. Um, the other thing that it does. Uh, so that's how we get the on-screen display up, and I'll show you that in just a few moments. The other thing we've got is this DTMF encoding down here. So the R3D repeater in, uh, in Melbourne has a number of DTMF tones that will preset this, uh, probably about eight or nine of them, I think. So what we're able to do is generate a sequence of tones automatically. So here's the, um, the uh, uh, HT 9200B encoder. That feeds into a little up a pair of up amps, one's configured as a band pass filter, the other just buffers it, and then the DTMF tones come out over here. Let me show you on the next slide. This is an early prototype. We built three of these some two years ago. I reckon I've got one still in my transmitter at home. Damien had one in his uh, analog transmitter, and Jack, I think you had one in your, or still had one in your analog transmitter as well. So you can see the big processor in there. Some of the other parts are made on the, on the, uh, the back of the board. So this is how the first prototype looked like all the prototypes. We, uh, we used uh, variable for construction. Here's the final product. Um, we've made, made about five of these so far, I think. And the same, exactly the same uh, board there, the uh, Max 7456, that red board in the middle. But now you can start to see we've made more extensive use of, uh, of, uh, of uh, service map components. Again, these are the beautiful 1206 series. So they're quite easy to, uh, to sum up. And here's the little um, breakout uh, board there for the, uh, 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 with the four resistors in parallel. Do you notice something wrong with that board? Do you notice something wrong with that? Four, but there's four point one ohm resistors. Yeah. Uh, I that's a point two two ohm resistor. Exactly correct. We only noticed this after we took the photo and just put the one resistor in there. And even have a would like to have a guess as to how much the current is going to be out because of that. So I typed on the max volume 12 and a half percent. So there you go. Just by uh, putting in one run resistor. We then pass this around backwards exactly. So that's the way I said it exactly. <laughs> Okay, so here are the capabilities, so current monitoring, we can monitor 0 to 
journalism are the fifth largest drug sales scandals. And you can see five inch monitoring to the PR, so only 28 months. I have a up to 50 months. We monitor the PI and the driver temperature in the green city volume. We have DTMF time generation for all of the RTV menus. We have the CW ID mode so we can put the transmitter into a timer mode and it just comes up with the ID and uh, the Morse code ID and the text every two minutes. Uh, my standard display is plus the status display. Would you mind pressing the uh, any up the status display here, and then we'll switch back to RTV in just a moment. And the dual video output, so we have two video outputs that max board and drive two, two outputs, so we have one going to the transmitter, and we have another one just for a preview monitor. So that is the OSD on screen display board capability, which is built inside the transmitter. Now, if I just switch back to Bars Levy or Jack, maybe you would be so kind because you know what buttons to press here. Uh, no, you need to do it over there on the projector. <laughs> uh, I'll just uh, say to Kelly and me for a moment. You <laughs> seem a bit closer if you want. <laughs> Okay, so we're back on uh, ATV just at the moment, so you can see uh, there is a delay, of course. It must be very confusing for everyone watching this, I can imagine, in the room here at least. So you can see there you're looking. Now, Jack doesn't have both drivers, uh, both temperature monitors installed, so you just put the driver one in. And um, then we're looking at the uh, 49 degrees, that's uh, fairly typical on a warm day, which it is really in here at the moment. Typically for the Mitsubishi module, I do run a bit warm. The Polish module is very, very cool. Excellent product. Our PA current is running at about 2.9 amps, and uh, we're also not monitoring the PA uh, voltage here just to, uh, just to, uh, the PA output just yet. Before going in, if you would like to just flip through the other displays, so we have the call sign down here in the bottom corner. Thank you. So we have call sign, we have call sign with frequency, we have call sign, keep up with me here, call sign with frequency inverted. Thank you. We put that in different corners. Okay. Thank you, thank you. One more. We have another message coming up in our live ATV with some great flashing text in there as well, pulling out again. Special event, yes, that's what we need for the live event. Special event, exactly. Next one, pre recorded. This is when you're running tapes or something, or uh, perhaps it's not so special with the event. <laughs> and the time from the uh, ATB pre recorded, telecast. Thank you. And back to the status part. So you've got a number. Now, if you could just press uh, the menu, uh, sorry, the DTMF, and just bring up the analog signal report for me, if you'd be so kind. Jack, could I ask if you could just turn the speakers up for me? No, 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 just the loud speakers over there in the corner, just so we can hear. So, Damien, if you could just. Oh, the DTMF's not working. Really Your signal report for today is S2 or less. But as you can see, S2... here and uh, uh, unless you have them muted you, you get uh, you get the howl around which uh, just is an ever increasing amount of feedback. Uh, sorry, I'm, um, uh, obviously I'm, I'm, uh, it's a pretty bad night. Uh, 
weather-wise, and uh, I've uh, been suffering from uh, bronchitis really badly. And uh, those that, those that uh, know, know me reasonably well uh, probably realise I'm fairly hoarse at the moment. Um, in terms of what's, uh, what's happening in the UV world, uh, uh, those of you that are in the Thursday morning uh, coffee club, which is really good, uh, know that I've been building uh, antennas to be replaced uh, probably in the spring, realistically, if, uh, when the weather gets, uh, gets better. And they will be for uh, RTV. I've also got some uh, smaller ones for RTV receive as well. Most of those antennas up there have been, well, the transmit ones have been up there for 20 years or so. So uh, 20 years up now, Dan and Ong, uh, is not a bad uh, well, not a bad effort. We did have some uh, some PA problems back a few weeks ago, and I seem to have uh, got around those. Um, we do have a, a 500 watt PA, which is uh, sitting in my ham shack here. Um, when I say 500 watts, it'll deliver well, probably nearly 600 uh, CW, but uh, on, on digital, it'll uh, probably deliver 100. Uh, in fact, I've had it running at 100 uh, quite well. So that one will go into service when the, uh, when the new antennas are in place. Uh, I've left the blowers that are associated with the 100 watt or well, the 500 watt PA uh, up there, and they're, they're cooling the existing PA. And, uh, it, it really loves it. The, uh, the power output from it uh, doesn't drop off at all because it's uh, in this ar arctic blast from these uh, three very large uh, fans that cool the uh, uh, the big fat PA. Uh, Today I've been uh, fiddling around with uh, something that may be of interest. Um, I guess it's just a black box. Let me unplug this. But it might give you an idea of uh, sort of what we what we do up there. Uh, this is this is an emulator, and you can probably see there's a uh, IR diode there. And up the other end is an RS232 port. And um, all of the uh, or some of the DTMF functions. Um, a control remotely um, by emulating uh, an infrared control. So the RS-232 ports up there drive um, an infrared controller up there uh, fed from RS-232 and there's uh, ASCII codes that uh, ge generate a control for, um, for the digital receiver. So th it's basically like having a uh, uh, a remote in front of the receiver and you can select uh, uh, the signal very important and is of interest to most people and the quality and, and that's done uh, with, with an IR emulator and what I did to do that was uh, uh, using a uh, fairly sophisticated oscilloscope I actually captured the, um, the pulses that come out of the, uh, uh, the remote for all the different functions and I measured all the times of all the pulses and the, and the frame, a frame being you know, one cycle of, of the control, and then emulated them using a micro. Now, unlike uh, unlike Ralphie, uh, I've got a huge supply of uh, little Atmel <laughs> micros, so all of my little micros are 8051 micros. Why do I use them? For the same reason that Ralphie uses what he's got there and the picks. Uh, I've got uh, probably got, uh, at least 50 of them, if not a bit more. So that's what I've been uh, just messing around with this afternoon. Uh, uh, the idea of, uh, of my experiments today is to uh, to isolate. There's two receivers up there, one for RTB1 and one for RTB2. And uh, at the moment, if you call up a signal report, you call up a receiving signal report on both channels. So I'm going to isolate those. So they're the sorts of things I've been, been doing. And uh, we, we uh, generally uh, uh, do improvements uh, all the time. Anyway, um, I'm, so, I'm sorry I'm not with you. And um, I'll, I'll hand it back to, uh, to Ralphie. Uh, I'll, I'll remain on two here. And, uh, and by the way, if you saw dropouts on two, uh, that's because I'm not very 
not very strong into it because it, the antennas are facing east actually, so not really uh, designed for uh, anyone west of the mountains. So back to you guys. Hi.